welcome back after a tea coffee break. Uh, hope you're in refreshed mood and this is the most awaited and most asked for part of the entire summit. Welcome back to the IDA Summit initiated by Architects Diary, sponsored by Insel Pro and Bromic Heating. And the venue, beautiful venue, is designed by uh, Met, uh, Menticor Designs. So yes, we reached to the uh, end of the today's day, but the most awaited part of uh, today, that is the workshop. All right. Uh, workshop will be conducted by Mr. Sai Sriman. Uh, and a brief about our mentor that he is a self-taught uh, computational designer who expertise for at energy simulation and parametric modeling. We already had a parametric design uh, session earlier today uh, in the afternoon. Uh, his interest to explore and exploit the benefits of technology tools at architecture led him to start Paracraft during his undergraduate at SPA Bhopal. The motive of this platform was to offer training at advanced 3D modeling, which helps in visualization of complex geometry and creates awareness uh, about cutting edge technologies to his fellow student community. Paracraft had a successful run spreading across the country, uh, training several hundreds of students uh, in a short span. So please uh, enjoy the workshop and uh, don't forget to ask your queries, which he would be happy to answer and solve it. Thank you so much. The screen is yours, Sai. Welcome to the workshop and the screen is all yours. Hello. Hello. Th firstly, I would like to thank IADA you know, for inviting me to this event. And I have been following a few sessions since the morning. They were very, uh, you know, they were very interactive and uh, they were like, very informative for the student community. And uh, today, you know, brief about myself. And I'm basically a graduate from 2020 batch. So I'm a pretty young one. And then you can be always, you know, free to ask any doubts because I wish the session to be, you know, more interactive because this is like a software learning. This is not any formal, you know, lecture class. And this is going to be very useful and fun learning process for the next hour, hour or one and a half hour. So, yeah. So just, you know, let's dive into the session. So, yeah. So I hope everyone have installed the softwares in your uh, systems. Before that, I'll just give a brief about, you know, what we are going to do in this session today and why do we actually require parametric modeling. We started this Paracraft organization when I was a student of, you know, third year BARC. And then I have, you know, come across few designs when, you know, I was going through Arc Daily or some magazines. So I felt, you know, they were uh, very complex forms or, you know, the some forms were not actually possible through conventional modeling software. And then I had this, you know, I have before like three to four years before, even in YouTube platforms or any such, you know, in general internet uh, platforms, we don't have any uh, proper teaching or, you know, training videos to uh, train students in parametric modeling. Then we felt this, you know, there is a great amount of necessity to actually help student community because there were a handful of, you know, maybe like four to five organizations back then in India, which were not very affordable to students. So that's how we started Paracraft as a student organization, which was completely run by students. And today we are grateful that uh, students like me and, you know, my friends have come forward. Now we have almost like in 15 cities, we have our training wing and our managers there. So it's basically like a student organization for students. We started it like that. And then we branched out to help the corporate sector and some architects as a consultants or, you know, training their staff. So that's all about us. And then when I say about parametric modeling, the first, uh, you know, the face of parametric modeling is Zaha in current uh, contemporary, you know, architecture. So, but is that, uh, you know, very alien to our context or, you know, our Indian design system i don't think so because if we see our you know uh, the designs from our past so if we see suppose mughal architecture or some islamic architecture in that case even it could be our you know hindu temples so we have a very free flowing forms or you know uh, they are not very restricted to you know straight lines there was always our architecture our design style or design typology has always been a very free uh, free uh, free flowing forms or you know free flowing geometries and then what has the evolution been to? So now what we see is a very rigid blocks. And we can't say that it is actually, you know, uh, the limits of our construction technology. 
we know that how ahead we have moon in this you know construction technology back then it was completely through masons now we have very advanced machines even robotics available for the construction so definitely it's not due to any you know uh, construction uh, technology uh, it is not any you know lacking of the construction technology then what can it be is that limits of the cad or is that you know boundaries of conventional 3d modeling tools or is this due to lack of imagination which i definitely think is not a reason and then so why i think parametric era is very important to the you know contemporary uh, designers especially the budding designers who is coming to the market is we are actually in a global platform where if suppose if i design something some, uh, some person in some corner of the world can easily see that through so, so magazines like architects daily or arc daily so we have a global platform and then to stand out in that and to create a brand of our own identity so we need to you know catch the pace of this uh, modern design technology and then when i talk about rhinoceros and grasshopper they i can say that they are the best of the best tools in parametric modeling and when i say about some software i'm not telling that they are going to eliminate the need of other software suppose as a designers we all know cad autocad software and we know sketchup softwares and photoshop and some tools like that so when i say we need to learn sketchup it doesn't necessarily mean that you know you you won't use cad in your design process every software has its own pros and cons and the important part and the wise part in this is that you should aptly know when to use what so here it is going to be the same case of rhinoceros and grasshopper whenever it comes about the parametric modeling or free form modeling this is going to be the king of all softwares when i say that it had few competitors like you know 3d max and such softwares but when rhinoceros uh, software is you know combined with grasshopper plugin so grasshopper is basically a plugin in rhino so that gives the scripting platform to rhinoceros it will actually you know uh, it will actually you know uh, be the best of best because uh, grasshopper in scripting platform you can do miracles you can achieve anything in our presentation we'll be showing what are the different opportunities which you can do using grasshopper uh, plugin and first thing comes of organic modeling as you all know when you think about parametrics this is one of the major phase so modeling organic you know forms or structures because in sketchup you'll have you won't have that freedom to get this efficient curvature or whatever is in your idea basically how this you know cad software is involved so they were evolved actually you know to just create whatever is in your mind so, so but what what we uh, so basically uh, previously we didn't have even cad we didn't have even sketchup all we had was drafting let's suppose how the mughal architects all how they worked was just using paper so whatever they had in mind they have you know kept that in paper back then due to you know the construction technology was not so efficient so they had some restrictions but whatever they had in mind they could you know primarily implement it but what has evolved slowly now we try to whenever we see about some design we have a basic inspiration and then we straight away come to sketchup and we start to model it so what happens if sketchup doesn't allow us to think beyond it our imagination would be restricted so as a result we can't achieve a very great designs in that so here comes rhino which will give you the solutions for such issues you can model any kind of organic geometries or free flowing geometries so this is only one facet of it so who are things about parametric all they know is about uh, modeling free forms but there are many more facets of parametric modeling which i'm going to discuss so before i show about the other facets i just wanted to you know show you a small uh, introductory video
so yeah so as you have seen you know as you have seen few examples of what all parametrics do so first thing when now you have got an idea about you know what is what all are possible it is not just modeling free forms it is also about modeling iterations so when i say about modeling iterations suppose you have this example on towards the right of your screen you can see a facade so what you can see here you can see a number of you know triangular geometries scaled with a some kind of a scripting or a numeric pattern in it so suppose imagine uh, you can imagine a suppose you can imagine a curve where the jali is almost closing and then as you go away from this curve you can see the jali opening so now suppose if you have to model it in sketchup or cad what you should do so at every jali you should uh, set a different you know radius a maximum you know circum a circle radius of it and then you should give it for every triangle manually which is a very time taking process so here comes the need of scripting and parametric modeling so this is the other facet modeling organic geometries is one facet of the parametric modeling and the other facet is scripting it which eases our work and if you can see towards the left of your screen you can see that you know the shapes are you know scaled according to the height where you know for each building suppose i say that in my script suppose this is my road whatever curve you see is the road buildings near the road should be of a, a less height suppose i can say maybe 3 meters or 6 meters and then as i go away from the road it will reach maybe some 30 meters 40 meters if i had to you know model this in an urban context there are many buildings hundreds and thousands of buildings which i can't actually model model it and lift them in sketchup so whenever there is an iteration which means that a multiple work you should actually perform each and every task multiple times here comes the need of scripting and then whenever you have complex structural systems as a designers it's easy for us to think you know very out of the box uh, design and out of the box form but it has its own service systems it has its own structural system or other you know service or mep services so here it, the software should also help the back end process of the design so suppose zaha this is some one of the zaha project and this in this project even the structural system is very complex so now if we sit this and do in a conventional you know uh, suppose stat pro or some kind of a stru structural design software it is not really possible so this parametric software should also help the service consultants and yes rhino does that and coming to the uh, uh, modeling techniques suppose in your some of your if you are a working architect you have you know made some very fancy design or you know very uh, you have created your own uh, innovative design and then you have applied it suppose for a cube towards the right you have made this cube you have modeled it and you have shown to the client and suppose he likes it and then comes some other day where you know you want to implement the similar kind of design so for a sub, uh, some other geometry i'm not just talking about increasing the height of the square cube or you know just scaling it in one dimension or two dimension that can easily be done in any software i'm talking about a drastic change from a complete change in the geometric form from a cube to a sphere and believe me this can be done in seconds suppose you script this complete cube and in the first line of the script you will just replace cube with sphere and you can get this design in minutes and then once you have the script what happens what have we seen in this video suppose in our video so uh, suppose we so i i hope this is seen so i hope suppose now I, this is my script towards your right whatever you see it as a circuits is grasshopper and then towards the left of your you know the screen is the rhino uh, rhino modeling software so if i had, you know adjust few parameters in my script the complete design changes so i'll be having a flexibility to alter the designs at any point of time and then and then coming to building performance and environment analysis this is one of the most you know booming market in the you know especially at europe and western countries because whatever design they do they have many benefits of being a green building or lead certified buildings so design stage now generally what happens in indian context so we as an architects design some kind of a building shape or a form with some passive techniques so we'll provide some shading uh, say that suppose i'll create some you know sun roof of 2 meters projection and then i'll assume that okay this is going to shade my facade at this from you know maybe from 11 o'clock to 3 pm there are many assumptions in when we say about passive designs so we say that okay winds will be coming in each direction because of some you know climate data which some sub whatever climate data we have is just as an average value 
but we don't have a short sure shot analysis that i can't say that suppose because of this shading i can reduce 20% of electricity you can't give a short sure shot value whereas using this rhino or grasshopper you can perform this environment analysis be it radiation study daylight analysis or wind flow analysis or you can also study the glare suppose you are designing some kind of an office space and you have created uh, user workstations you have many uh, you know monitors and then you should be careful here about the glare entering from the facade so you need to know so being as a designer you need when you are designing a facade it is not just as an aesthetical element it is not just an element which merges to the context those are very broad aspects which designer you know think but there are many back end technical aspects which i think designer should be aware of because only then it will be a holistic design process and being as a creative designer it should not be that some engineer comes and so suppose how the design process works is that we'll give some design for mep consultants to give, do the joinery work of the facade or we'll give structural consultants to make it stand out but they are not actually getting involved in the design process as a designer we are not getting involved in the technical process so there has to be some kind of a bridge in these two and when i talk about the bridge it involves also about the structural analysis so now this is a simple truss i have just given for the representation purpose suppose when we have some kind of a complex pavilions we have seen the dubai pavilion or in case of even our iida summit iida summit so they have created a beautiful pavilion and the auditoriums so as a designers will be designing them and we need to know suppose uh, suppose in the in this image if you see the red areas so they have the maximum stress so what design intervention you can do as a designer to help the structure per perform better it it is easy to tell that okay i'll i'll give a simple truss here so any shape i do it structural engineer should come in and just create it there will be huge wastage of materials and there will be a huge wastage of valuable resources so as a designer if we also have a opportunity to visualize our structures i'm not telling about you know taking some kind of bundles of you know numerical data calculations so whatever whenever i talk about building performance or structural analysis or some technical aspects it is going to be very you know infographic or easy to communicate for the designers because this software is especially for architects and you know interior designers or any designer field you can see here when you know the graph here it will show okay whichever areas are in red color then you'll know okay this curvature here is affecting my shape so it will actually give information at every stage of the design process so these are the other facets of parametric design which are less spoken of or which are less aware especially in indian market and trust me if you have such skills in your cv or a portfolio you would be actually it would be a cake walk for you to go for any mncs or any reputed countries abroad so with this brief understanding let's kick start the per, you know the learning process and i hope now we'll be entering in this session we have some one and a half hour odd session in this so it's not uh, you have seen the complexity of the software name it you can do anything complex geometries you can script it you can do structural analysis you can do environment analysis it is you know impossible task for me to you know even give a glimpse about everything in this session so what i would be doing is that i will train you or you know i'll introduce you to the software so that you will be in a stage to explore beyond i hope the software is installed in your uh, pcs or laptops or whichever you know gadgets you are using it because in this design process everything is interlinked in this session i'll be showing you various tips and tricks to start modeling in rhinoceros only in this session i'm not going to talk about grasshopper so if you are stuck at any point feel free to raise your questions in the comment section so that my team member or me would address it so uh, after every 5 10 minutes i'll be looking after the uh, question session because once i'm handling the screen i can't look on the question section here so at every 10 minutes i'll take a break and I'll just check in if there is any question raised do let me know if you are stuck at any point hope this will be a interactive session and you'll have a great fun in it so starting off with the rhino uh, you can just open your rhino software in your system so first you can listen to my lecture i'll give you time so that at every stage you can just uh, you know try it in your software so if you straight away start you know opening the software you you might not follow you know what is uh, going in the uh, video or in this live session so that is you know basically a little drawback in you know, taking uh, live sessions i hope it there was due to this pandemic we are forced to work in such a way so first you can listen to this session and then i'll give you some time so that you can observe in your screens so when you open your rhino screens 
on the top you can see here your command history here you can see your command history bar and command prompt this is similar to autocad suppose you want to draw a line in autocad what do you do you just type line so basically in the autocad you have in the bottom center you have this command bar in rhino the same command bar is on the top and similarly above the co command bar you'll be having a command history prompt in autocad similar way you have in the rhino also and then so coming to the rhino interface of the screen so it is broadly divided into four screens you can you know modify it you can take it into five screens or you know six viewports so what are these viewports so once you start modeling it suppose suppose now you can see here all the four screens suppose i model a simple cube here so you, if i model a simple cube here you can see that in all the viewports it will be changing so this is basically like a max inspired interface so if i make change in one this is basically a viewport so you are viewing in you know top direction front direction right direction in perspective at once so that's how it's as a standard viewport they'll give you four viewports you can also change it i'll show you how <clears throat> and then you can find here the titles you can find here i hope my mouse is also visible so you can you can find here the titles here suppose there's a perspective this is the top view front right you can find all your titles here and then you have here on the top you have your standard toolbar in standard toolbar you won't have any modeling tools but you'll be having tools to navigate suppose zoom pan orbit or save file or properties you have such basic uh, options in standard toolbar and then coming to the main toolbar towards your left this actually hosts all the major options which you would be required suppose you want to model any curves you want to model any surfaces so all this would be hosted towards your left and then coming to your osnap toolbar which is at the bottom in autocad you have osnap right suppose you want to you know pick the end point of a line suppose you want to draw some perpendicular line in autocad it will automatically show a perpendicular line that's a simple osnap similarly even rhino has its own osnap this is very similar to autocad rhino is very simple and it whoever has used autocad previously it should be a cakewalk for them to learn rhino is a very simple software and then coming to the status bar at the below so what this shows suppose you are drawing some line here it will show the coordinates or the length of that line and then it will show you the layer properties of that line so all the basic the status of the current point or a current line will be shown in your status bar so i'll give you a minute to just you know check all these in your screens and then we'll proceed ahead So, so yeah, hope you all have tried it. And if you are stuck anywhere, do let me know in the comment section. And then once you open your Rhino screens, so you will have all your four screens. Suppose you want to draw a line here. So what do you do in Rhino? Or you know, when, what do you do in your AutoCAD? You just type line. So here, straight away, you can go to your command section or you can just type it. Whenever you type it, it will automatically type in the command section. You can just type line. Once you type a line, you can see a list of suggestions. In this, you can say you can you know whatever the nearest first. If you suppose if I type li, it will automatically prompt any. So that's how even AutoCAD works. But how it is how is it different from AutoCAD? Is suppose l in AutoCAD means only line. But here the list it shows depends on our command history. Suppose I use light command more than line. <laughs> so in future, if I type l, lights might be shown ahead. So then I need to even type LIN so that line would appear. It depends on the command history, basically. So suppose if you were to want to type line, just type LI, you'll get line, obviously, because you're the first time users. And then what does it show? In your command bar on the top, you can see here, in, always follow command bar. In Rhino, this is the major advantage. Every instruction you need, this command bar will be providing you. So in your command bar, what can you see? 
it will show that start of line. So here I am telling it, the line should start here. Just click it on your screen. And then in the perspective mode, you can just click on your perspective mode. So once you move the mouse in your perspective mode, you can see that even all other, you know, all other viewports such as top, friend, right? Even they are changing uh, along with your mouse. So it's basically a viewport, like a camera set in different direction. And then you can just click on some other point. So what do you basically see here? You can see a line formed with the start point and end point. This is one type of a line. So now, now suppose now you have drawn this line and it is not very comfortable to see all the four screens always. And I'll, I'll let you know when do you need to see these viewports. But in standard process, whenever you're you know, working or something or drafting something, you generally go to top view or perspective. <laughs> generally, perspective holds good for all general design purpose. So how to maximize the viewport? You can just double click on the perspective so that you will maximize. So now here you have maximized the viewport. Now how to minimize it again? You can just double click on the same area so that it will minimize. And then if you want to directly navigate, if you want to directly navigate, so suppose here in the bottom, you have perspective, top, right, front. So you can, you have all these options in the bottom here. I hope my, even my mouse will be visible in this session. So yeah, here, if you suppose, if I click my, suppose if I maximize perspective, you have maximized the perspective mode. And then at the bottom, you have all other viewports such as perspective, top, front, right. So if you just click here, you can see that your viewport is also automatically navigated. And then if you just want to delete it, so you have both the types of selects, same like an AutoCAD, you'll have right select and the left select, basically like a green and blue select. So if you move towards the right, only the objects which are completely enclosed in the rectangle will be selected. Suppose I'm drawing this right box, it is similar to a blue box in uh, AutoCAD. So it is this slide is not getting selected. If I make it completely enclosed, then it will select. So you can delete it. And then coming to the properties of OSNAP. So hope you all have OSNAP, you know, OSNAP uh, on here. So here if in your status toolbar. So whatever, suppose I'm, suppose you're moving the mouse on the screen. You can see the coordinates also changing because that is the status of your mouse. And then what is the status of your uh, auto, uh, Rhino interface? So if OSNAP is on or you have smarter, you have various other options. So ortho, you might be very familiar since you're a user. I'm considering that you're a user of AutoCAD and SketchUp. And then, uh, and then you'll have here OSNAP. Please do on that OSNAP because he, only once you on the OSNAP, you can make the selections here. Okay, once you have made the selection, Okay. Oh, I just got to know that my screen is not presenting once again. I hope my screen is visible now. Yeah, I hope my screen is visible now. So yeah. Now, uh, suppose now once you on your, you know, in your OSNAP tool, in the status toolbar, you have to always on the OSNAP so that you can actually pick some points. Suppose I have drawn a line here and then I want to start the line from this end point. Then my, in my OSNAP toolbar, it should be notified here. So only then, so suppose my OSNAP is off, then I can't actually, you know, select a line at this end point. It will randomly pick some point. It can't actually hold the end point. That is similar to AutoCAD. I'm not going to very, you know, details of these basics because then I can't actually uh, teach about the, you know, pros of Rhino. So I'm just, you know, giving a glimpse of the basics. So you have, I'm, I'm presuming that you're familiar with ortho, snap in such toolbars. And then the most important thing which stands out is the gumball. That is the must. If you're immediately when your Rhino is on, ensure that the gumball should be on. That is the best of the best command in Rhino for to my experience. Because no, now what is gumball? So once you select the any object, once you select any object, uh, is my screen sharing on? I still got a reviews that my screen sharing is not on. Just a second. Hello. Hello. So yeah, 
so yeah so yeah my voice was not audible yeah now if you can see on the toolbars on your top you have a various set of toolbars like standard which just shows you a basic commands to navigate and then you have here suppose you have your curve tools which have all the types of curves possible for you to use in rhino and then you'll have your surface tools basically to create any basic surface so once you click on the standard what can you see you can see all the basic navigation tools on the top and then you'll have here a standard set of modeling tools so here suppose i can see here you have first six icons for curves and then you can see here blue logos so everything is very interactive in this you can see a logo suppose if you want to draw a box you can see the logo here you can see a basic set of surface tools you can see a basic set of curve tools and then you can use some like you know array so this standard toolbar has a you know a brief set of all important tools in curve tools it has some set of important tools but suppose your work is not done with this tool set then you'll go to the detailed toolbar in the curve tool set so that you can visualize all the set of tools and the same goes with the surface suppose you don't have the surface which you wanted to do in the standard toolbar you'll go to your surface toolbar and then do this so just to recapitulate uh, the session because my mic was in mute i didn't notice that so here in the bottom you can see here all your settings suppose o snap should be on for you to pick at any point otherwise you know your mouse can't you know recognize the end point perpendicular point similar to autocad and then your gumball should always be on because suppose you want to suppose now now i want you people to draw a basic rectangle so go to your curve tool set don't use a standard toolbar i want you to explore the software is all about exploration because it has a vast you know users so go to your tool, uh, curve toolbar and then here on the bottom you can find here your rectangle tool you can just draw a basic rectangle so how to zoom in the viewport so if you have if you are in a four viewport style whatever viewport is active you can see here as a blue shade all other viewports will be in a fainted white so you can double click on your active viewport you will uh, you know you'll maximize it again you can double click here you'll minimize it so just draw a basic uh, square or a rectangle using curve tools here once you take a curve how to how do you do that so in your curve tool go to rectangle tool right here you can see your rectangle just click here then follow your command tool set always follow whatever curve you type so suppose you can uh, you can straight away type here rectangle but i'm not insisting you to do that because if you type in straight away rectangle you won't be explore, exploring the tool set suppose here i have my rectangle tool or i can just straight away type it so what is it, as a learner what is the benefit if i search each and every tool from the toolbar while searching for a rectangle tool i will observe several other tools which are close to it so then okay i can know that okay this curve tool is also there here maybe for some purpose in future i can use it so you know it's all about exploration in the beginning process so in your curve tools click here rectangle in your command tool but it will all it will automatically show the second step select the first corner you have selected the first corner and then it will show select the other corner here you can see the two corners just do that i'll give you some 30 seconds time just make a small rectangle so hope you all have made this basic shape in this session my intent is to actually make you do some kind of a parametric form so we must actually quickly you know move ahead from the basics so i'll try to give it just a glimpse of the basics i won't be going very deep in this session uh, and then once we do the rectangle now how does gumball work if your gumball is on so here in the bottom toolbar hope you can see my screens now so in the gumball you can see here the gumball should be active only once the gumball is active if you select some object you can see the gumball in the center of the geometric center of the object suppose my gumball is off if i select this object i can't notice the gumball so now what is gumball if you see the gumball here you can see all the three perpendicular axes suppose the green means it is parallel to y red means it is parallel to x and blue means it is parallel to z so now i want to move my object parallel to you know y axis so it means that it is green axis 
So I'll just click the object so that my gumball would be automatically activated. Then I'll click on the Y axis. So suppose here I'll click on this green tool. I'll toggle on this green. I'll hold my mouse. I'll drag it and then I'll leave it. So here I have moved my object along the Y direction. The similar goes along X and along Y or along Z. So quick, you can just try this move, a random move for maybe 30 seconds time. So yeah, back to the session. And then sub, now suppose I'm randomly moving it. Suppose uh, it doesn't generally work like that. Suppose now you want to move some window to one place or the other place. You want to move the furniture. You need to be precise. You can't just you know randomly drag and drop it without any accuracy because we are going to do an architect. We are talking in an architect's perspective. So we need some values. We need some constraints to perform some action. So here, if I want to move it in some direction, suppose 20 units, 10 units, then what do I do? So I'll click on this instead of dragging and dropping it here. What I'll do is I'll just click it here, a single click. So once I do a single click, I can see a toolbar. So in this toolbar, I'll just, you know, type some value, suppose 25 units, then it will automatically move 25 units along that axis only. So here, now if I want to move 30 units in along X, so what do I do? I'll click on this X axis and type 30. So it will move along X. So now we have two options. So in your command toolbar, you can type move. And then if you type, M, if I type MO, suppose if I type M, if I type M, what is it showing? It is showing macro editor. So what do I need now in AutoCAD? M means move automatically. That's what I'm trying to, you know, uh, being precise in it. You just, you know, be, have to make sure in the list, the whatever command you want should appear in the top. Only then click on enter or space, similar to AutoCAD. So M move is not seen on my list. So I'll type MO. So now I can see MO on my top. So then I'll press enter. Now it is showing me move command, select objects to move. So then I'll select my rectangle or a square. Then I'll select this object, enter. Enter or spacebar is both same in Rhino. So I've selected this and then I've selected this object, enter. And then it is asking point to move from. So the base point. And then it is asking me what is the destination point? Point to move to. Then it, I'll keep the destination point. So now I can either move it using move car tool or using gumball. So before work is done using gumball. So why did they actually introduce move tool? And now for this, I'll be showing you a demonstration. So I'll show you this, then you can try it out yourself. So suppose I have my line here, ensure that your OSNAP is on toggle on your own step. Your OSNAP should be toggled on and then click here in this toolbar. You need to, you know, select endpoint near and then mid intersection center perspective. Here you can see a list of OSNAP settings. Once your OSNAP is on, just on them so that a Rhino would know what all in the selections you need in your OSNAP. So now using gumball, I want to move this endpoint of the rectangle to this point, to one endpoint of the line. So how do I do that using gumball? I can drag it using gumball, I can drag it. I, I can just, you know, drag it randomly here like this or I can move it. Suppose I'm guessing it, maybe this might be some five units. I'm guessing it, okay, this is not five. Then I'm guessing it again, 25. Okay, this is not 25, it's too much here. I want to join it. So whenever there is a reference point to copy, so I have a reference point. So this point, end point of my vertex of a geometry has to coincide with the, some other point of the geometry. Then you can't do it using gumball. So always you have to use command toolbar for that. So now I'll type move command. I will select this as my, I'll select this object. Okay, move command. And then I'll select point to move from. So this is my point to move from. And then I'll select my destination object. Since my OSNAP is on, so automatically my destination would be prompted here. So it is showing end and the not point, I'll click here. So now I accurately know that this geometry and line have been intersected. Using gumball, I can move it randomly or I can move it using some value, but I can't move it using some reference, like some endpoint, some midpoint, or such references can't be made using gumball. 
so hope you all now i'll just give you one minute you can make some basic shapes is like a line or a square and try mood command and you move using gumball with dragging and dropping and precisely giving some value so you have 30 seconds hope you all have tried it right so now for all the other set of tools i'm not going to be giving you you know time to you know uh, try it suppose like rotate move all such basic tools i'll just be demonstrating on this screen so that you can just see it and try it later because there are a huge set of actually basic tools itself now you have got idea of both command toolbar and gumball so in a similar way i can rotate it suppose now if you see the gumball here you can see three axes so suppose you are in the perspective mode if you scroll in through your scroll wheel scroll in scroll out it will be zoom in zoom out and then if you right click if you you know just right click here it will be orbiting it right click and then you know hold and navigate it it will be orbit and then right click and shift right click and shift is the shortcut for the pan tool so where can you see all these navigation tools in your standard toolbar you can see pan here orbit here zoom in zoom out so i'm just uh, telling repeating it again so right click would be the orbit scroll in scroll out is zoom in zoom out and then right click orbit and shift so right click is orbit right so right click and shift is the pan tool okay so now suppose if you click on some object and if you see it in a direction and now if you see it in this direction here you can see three perpendicular arcs so what does this blue arc green arc and red arc represent so blue arc will be perpendicular to blue move, move arrow which means that you will be rotating it along blue line as a normal okay suppose i am just dragging it here and rotating it so this is basically working like a rotate command so now suppose if i rotate it along red arc what does this mean along the red perpendicular arrow it will actually rotate it will rotate along like this so similarly it will go with the green arc so in this gumball you have here move tool using the arrows you can rotate it using the arcs you can also rotate it using some value suppose instead of dragging it and dropping it like this i can just click here and type some value suppose 35 40 it will rotate it along some such value suppose 30 degrees 40 degrees if you are specific about that you can rotate it and similar goes with the command so when do you use rotate command suppose i have a line here i want to rotate i want to rotate this square so that it will overlap so what do i do now i can't rotate it using gumball gumball will always take the center of as a pivot as a standard reference so now i want to rotate it with this reference so same like a cat i'll type rotate i'll select the objects to rotate enter i'll select my start point i'll select my second reference point and then i'll rotate it so whenever there is a reference point you should use you should use this uh, rotate command okay and then using gumball you, you also have uh, you can also scale it suppose here you can see a dotted line what does this dotted line indicate suppose now i just make a perfect rectangle so now what does what does this dotted line indicate now you can see here a green dot opposite to green arrow which means that it is scaling only along y axis suppose now i drag on this drag on this blue square or a red square it will be scaling it along the direction of this arrow so this basically works like a scale command also you'll be having a scale command in your command settings you, you can also scale it using gumball and in the command settings i hope you know you know when to use command setting you can when you, when you should type scale means when you have a reference point suppose from this point to this point you want to scale it then you'll use your scale set command in the command toolbar you'll type scale okay and now whoever are using rhino 5 can't actually see this because this is a latest addition in rhino 6 so if you have downloaded the latest version of rhino then you can see here a small spear or a ball in this arrow in the center of this arrow you can see a small ball here so whenever you have a curve if you this is basically working like an extrude command so why, how does this work if you select some curve if you click on this spear and then drag it so it basically extrude along that direction so that also works like an extrude command which is a recent addition in rhino it was not previously there in rhino 5 okay and this is the basic interface of the rhino 
so here uh, maybe you can you know explore other tools like you can draw some circles you can draw some accurate modeling suppose you can draw using some coordinates you can perfectly draft your plan here you can do n number of things here and then when should you use actually other viewports so you have front viewport right viewport i'll be showing you few examples from here onwards so here from here onwards it's going to be a demonstration session so might not be that you will be actually for a very important tools i'll be giving you an opportunity to practice so uh, in the other case you can just make it take a notes of it and try it after the session so from now comes the core of the parametric modeling so now we have understood the basic interface and how the rhino few commands work here in rhino now uh, i'll just scale my other screen so yeah hope you can see my presentation so now how does you know rhino actually create those smooth geometries so suppose this is the two examples a sphere from a sketchup and a sphere from a rhino so how does this actually create a very smooth surfaces so in sketchup what happens is that uh, it will actually iterate every surface into smaller segments be it a small four sided or a square small squares or small triangles it will iterate it as a smallest surface but rhino does that using points that those points are called nerves so in rhino creates a surface using points and sketchup creates surfaces using surfaces minute surfaces so obviously point is much more minute than is minute as surface possible ever possible so rhino will give you you know there is there will be no comparison between the organic geometries created in sketchup or any other rigid software as compared to the rhino so that's actually the introduction of it now coming to the whole crux of the rhino the most important commands so i have broadly classified it for all the parametric modeling there are few commands such as loft you can have sweep with one rail sweep with two rails you can have planar surface and then you'll have uh, you know patch so believe me just you know practice these five commands and anything you come across you know maybe you can take inspiration from any zaha structure or any other parametric structure these five commands will be able to do your work just five commands i have broadly classified in that 99.99% of all your works will be done using these five commands so this is one of the most important session now so now once you have you know made all your basics basic shapes and structures here now i'll start off with a basic parametric shape so first we'll just try to you know draw a basic circle we have 35 odd minutes so now we'll just start off with suppose i'm drawing a circle i can either type circle or i can select in my curve tools so i'll type circle here i'll select a random shape now how does i'll just create my screen so yeah so now you can see my rhino screen so i have just drawn a circle from a command toolbar or you know the curve tools once you have the circle tool and then i want to create a surface in inside it so whenever you want to draw a curve you can go to your curve tools and select whichever curve you want you can find here your circle here you can find here your circle and then you can go to your surface tools and then start making it as a surface now in your surface tool here you'll have surface from planar curves in this next in the session from now on i'll be talking precisely only about the surface tools because that is the most important part of rhino so once you have this now this is a planar surface right it is not flowing like it is not abruptly you know forming some kind of shape suppose now if i make some curve like this this is definitely not a planar curve because there is not just one plane in it there are multiple planes this curve is passing into previously now here my curve is completely passing through a single plane so from this surface so whenever you have a closed surface so remember this point so what next tool i'm talking about is surface from a planar curve you can see my mouse here you can see the text here surface from planar curve so whenever you have a closed curve i'm being very specific it should be only closed curve okay only when all the end points are closed suppose i'm making using a polyline so how do i make it using a polyline in the curve tools should select polyline now you please don't you know uh, refrain from you know trying it in the rhino you can just observe it here and then try it in your free time so i'm just making a polyline so this is basically a planar open curve so now i'll go to my surface tools i want to create a surface inside then i'll click here surface from planar curves 
So this is a planar curve. I could create a surface inside. Whereas this, if I select this curve and click surface from planar curves, I can't actually cre uh, create a surface. So we need a, if we if we we need actually a closed curve network. Only then Rhino can actually even it for SketchUp. Suppose you have some points missing, you, it surface you know SketchUp surface can't be formed for any software. The software needs to know the profile of it because software can't assume okay this point will join here. So keep this as a key rule. It should always join. Okay. Now we have nerves. As I said, as I said, suppose now I'm I'll be creating now. We have so surfaces, we have curves, we have surfaces, and we have solids. So what is a solid? So if we extrude a curve, suppose I have a rectangle. I have a rectangle. If I extrude a rectangle, so now how, how should I copy using gumball? I'll hold alt and drag it. Similar to move, I'll just hold alt so that I can make a copy of it. Now, if I extrude a curve, if I extrude a curve like this using gumball, Just a second. So yeah, there was some issue with my screen sharing. So hope it is visible now. Now you have here, suppose you want to, I'll just recapitulate it. So now you should create some kind of a geometry and you want to create a copy of it. So how do you do that? You'll hold alt and then you'll drag it using gumball so that a copy would be created. Here you have created a copy using gumball. Now from curve, from curve, you can actually create surface. From surface, you can actually create a solid. I'll show what does that mean. So how do you extrude it using gumball? You'll just hold it here and drag it. From a curve, you're actually creating a surface. So from a surface, so now I want to create a base surface here and then I'll create a solid. So I have my curve. How to create a surface? I'll go to my surface tools and I'll just create a planar surface. In this planar surface, I'll be now I should create a solid. So how do I do that? Now I'll select this surface and then I'll go to my solid tools and then here towards my left, I'll have extrude surface. So in this extrude surface, I can make a simple plane extrusion. So a curve, I can create a surface and then from a surface, I can create a solid. You can also extrude it using surface tools. So basically you want to create a, surf, a periphery wall along this. So it is basically a surface. So how is that done in your surface tools here? You'll be having extrude straight command. So you'll select this curve, enter, and then you'll just extrude it. So if you want to create a surface from a curve, all the tools you need will be in your surface tool set. So if you want to create some kind of a solid form from a surface, then all your tool set will be in the solid toolbar. Okay. And then now coming to free flowing geometries. Suppose I create a line, I create a line and then now it is a very rigid line. I want to actually uh, create a very organic shape of this line. So either ways is that one way I can make a spline. You can see here in this curve toolbar, you can draw something like an interpolate curve, which basically means a spline. So you can select various points. Okay, you can select various points, it will turn into a curved uh, line or else suppose now if you select a curve, you can see at various control points. So this is what I was talking about. So in Rhino, everything is handled by points, whereas in SketchUp, it is handled using surfaces. So if you just alter these control points, your whole curvature can change. It is similar to, you know, spline in uh, order, uh, AutoCAD. Okay, now how do you convert a line into a spline? There is a command called rebuild. So if you use rebuild command, you can actually uh, change this curve. Now by default, a line will have only two points. So you can just increase the number of control points so that you would have you know, a multiple control points in it. So it's similar to this, you have created various control points for a line. So what is a control point? If you select any object, so it is a basically a point which controls the curvature. So previously line had only two control points. So how do you increase control points? Select the object. Here in your curve tools, you'll have an option called rebuild. So basically you're changing the curvature. Rhino has actually placed that logo as a man hitting with a hammer. You can find it here. So you can just change the value to five and then you can change the shape. Okay. That's how you can change a line into a supply line. Now, now I want to create a curve, which is perpendicular to my 
plane. So I'll go to my right axis. So in my right, so you can go to my right axis and then I can see here. So I'm, previously I have drawn everything on this flat surface, right? So when I'm viewing from my right camera, I can see everything in a straight plane. Now I want to create a very organic geometry. Okay. Suppose I'm rebuilding this curve and then I'm just creating an organic shape. Now, what do I do? Once I've created this organic shape, I'll create a multiple copies of it. How do I do that? I'll drag it using alt. I'll drag it with alt. So I have created three copies of it. Now I'll just change the curvature of the curves. I just trying to show you one of the parametric, you know, surface tools. So next session will be completely focused on the surface tool. So now I have three different curves with a different curvature. Now I need to create a surface which flows along them. So how do I do that? In my surface tools, I have a command called loft. You can see here loft or you can straight away type loft. So it is here. If I can click the loft, it is asking to select the curves in loft. Remember that you should always click it in an order. Okay. So now you can just, you know, make this as a proper shape so that your result would be better. So now you can straight away click loft. So now can you see here? So it is a very different, every curve is different. So you have created a very smooth flowing form. So whenever you, if you see any project, so first thing, first thing you should do is imagine a curve profile. Suppose you have any other complex building form. You should just imagine a curve profile, create a network of curves. So create a peripheral curves and then you can create a loft command. You can type loft and select curves in an order so that a curve smooth curve surface will be flowing all across them. You can see here the smoothness. Suppose if you don't follow the order of the curves, suppose I select this curve. And then I select the corner curve and then I'll select the center curve. So what happens? So the surface will try to move from the first curve to the last curve. Again, it will come to the first curve. So you'll get a an error in the surface. So that's why I keep saying that you can see here, the surface is trying to come from the first curve to the last curve and again, the center. So there is no, you know, rhythm in the flow of the surface. Okay. This is about the loft. And then what is the next command? So now what have we seen? We have seen surface from planar curve and so we have seen loft. Okay. And then now suppose we have some kind of a boundary edges. So suppose now, now I have this curve. Suppose I have two sets of curves, two sets of curves here. And then I need to create, I need to create a rail here. So now I'll be showing you four curves which can either be, you know, used, replaced. So you can actually use either of the commands in your case here because it has a multiple use. So, you, so those curves are sweep with one rail or sweep with two rails and then surface from boundaries and patch. So these, you know, curves work for a similar, you know, purpose in some cases, in some cases they have a precise use. So now I'm trying to create a random shape here. Now, Suppose, suppose I just wanted to create a loft here. So if loft, what happens? It will just create a surface which is flowing along them. Got it? From this of this curve to this curve, it will just flow along. Okay. But now I have posed a new condition. So now what is my new condition? So I'm telling that my base. So this surface rail should flow along this curve. So the surface should flow along this curve. I'm imposing a new condition. So I need to tell Rhino that, okay, this is not the surface profile I need. Though I'm satisfied with these two ends. Rhino has followed my rule that it has, you know, got into the two ends, but it is not taking the base. In such case, what do I do? I do sweep using one rail. So I can straight away type sweep one or in your surface tools, you can see here with one symbol, you can type sweep with one rail. So you can select your rail. And then you can select your both the cross sections. So you can see here. Now you can observe that you have created a base profile. You can see that your surface constraint is respecting the base profile you have given. In previously, what has happened if I select these two and select loft, it will just create a curve profile flowing along this. 
So I'll just move it. So how do I move it? I'll click here and I'll drag here. So hope you have got the difference now. So when does a loft work? So when you have a series of curves, suppose you have multiple curves here. So now you have a series of curves here and that curve profile can alter, but they, they should be in the same series. Then you should use loft command. Suppose you don't have a series of curves. Suppose one curve is perpendicular to it or it is in a different direction. Then you really can't use loft command because loft means you're basically flowing along all your set of curves. In this here, I can't tell my surface should flow from this curve to this curve to this curve. Basically, this rail doesn't mean that surface is flowing. I'll just show you what the flow means. So suppose I'm using loft for these three curves, this curve and this curve. You can see here. So from this curve, it is trying to flow from these three curves. So here loft doesn't work. So here sweep with one rail works. Suppose in a similar case, in a similar case, I have, I have also kept a top constraint. Okay, I have also introduced a top constraint. So I'm just modifying my top constraint to something like this. Okay, my top curve is different. My bottom curve is different. My side profiles are different. Now, what do I do? So here comes the trick. So now if I use sweep it one rail, so I can select it here. So it will first ask me always follow these instructions in the command bar. Select the rail, select the cross section curve, enter. So now you can see here if I use sweep with one rail, it is following the rail instruction because I use only one rail here. But the Rhino doesn't have any information about the top. So it has automatically generated some kind of a free flowing shape to the top. Now I need to tell Rhino that even my top is a, having a restriction in it. So you need to, if you have something in your mind, you need to tell to the Rhino. So it, so it doesn't matter that if you draw here and you won't inform that to Rhino. So how do you inform it? You should tell that, okay, now I have to sweep with two rails. I, I need to use two rails. So these are my first rail, these are my second rail, and these two are my cross sections. Okay. So now you can see here, your top rail is respected here. You can see the surface flowing with the top rail and with the base constraint. And you can see here using your cross sections, you can see the cross sections here. So all these are respected. So what all did we try now in this surface toolbar? Surface toolbar is the whole you know key of Rhino. 90% of your uh, work in Rhino will be done using you know, surface tools. Surface tools is the life of Rhino actually. So you understand this properly, try each and every tool in surface toolbar, you'll, you'll have a good hand in Rhino. So once you're good in Rhino, exact everything. So suppose Grasshopper is scripting. If you straight away dive into Grasshopper without a strong foundation in Rhino, it will be very difficult because here you can at least see is visually you will have some logos. So you can see here one means okay, sweep with one rail. In Grasshopper, you need to script it. So if you are you don't have a good hand in surface tools in Rhino, it will be a difficult task for you in Grasshopper. So here now, what all did we try? Sweep with one rail, sweep with two rails. We have tried loft. We have tried surface with planar curves. And now we have surface from network of curves. Okay, now how does that work? Suppose I have another constraint. Now I'll tell that at the center of my surface, suppose there is some kind of a facade and at the center, I need it exactly perpendicular. Previously, previously how my surface was, suppose I use sweep it two rails. How my surface was at the center, you can see here my surface, I'm telling that, okay, I don't want this curvature at the center. I want it exactly straight. So now you're imposing a new condition to Rhino and you need to inform that to Rhino. Can you do that using sweep it two rail? No. Why? Because once you type sweep it two rails, you can select only two rails. So first rail, second rail, and automatically it will ask select cross section curves. So first cross section, second cross section. You don't have any option to select this curve in sweep it one rail or two rails. Here comes surface from network of curves. You can see here surface from network of curves. Just click here and select all the curves in an order. Follow clockwise or anti-clockwise and then come to curves in the center. So I'm following clockwise rule. One, two, three, four, five. Now you can see here, you can see here at the center, the surface is exactly straight. So basically you need to tell Rhino. So if you, here you have various options. That is why I'm telling never in an initial stage of practicing Rhino, never type sweep with one rail or sweep with two rails. Always click here. Because suppose if you didn't know this command of surface from network of curves, you wouldn't you know, know how to create this structure. It would be impossible task for you. Okay, so now suppose if I create loft, 
if I do loft using these three curves. So what happens if I use loft? I'm not giving a constraint for top and bottom. Okay, so if I have no constraint for top and bottom, so it has just flown the surfaces along these three curves. So loft works when you want to flow, when you want to create some kind of a restriction, then comes sweep with one rail, sweep with two rails or surface from network of curves. And then, so these are basically four important commands. With these four important commands, you can do anything. Okay. And now you have some kind of additional commands. Suppose you have all your boundary curves. Using this boundary curves, suppose I have all these boundary curves. Okay. I have all these boundary curves. Using this boundary curves, I can also create surface from two, three, four edges. Basically, this means surface from boundary curves. So I can set all my boundary curves. It will create a similar result as sweep with two rail because you are giving information of all four ends. Okay, in sweep with two rails also you have given information of all four ends. So this is basically like a additional tool in Rhino. But previous four tools I'll repeat it: loft, sweep with one rail, sweep with two rails, and surface from network of curves. Using these four tools you can create anything. Okay, and surface from planar curves. And then you have sweep with uh, boundary. And then you have surface from network of curls. And then you also have a tool called patch, which will work as a similar way of surface from boundaries, two, three, four edges. But I want to tell you that suppose the curves are not joined. Suppose one end of the curve is not joined. So you can see here my curves are not joined. In this case, surface of two, three, four edges, which means that it can be either here. You can see here that it will automatically form some kind of a loose curve. So what is my curve profile here? My curve is here and here, but it is not joined properly. So what did Rhino do? Rhino has created automatically some kind of a surface joining them. So if you use this tool, so surface from network of or surface from edges, basically boundary curve, you need to keep in mind that it should be joined. Okay. So similar tool is called patch. So the patch, how I categorize it, it is like a lost result. If you have tried all other curves, uh, surface tools like loft, surface from you know boundary curves, uh, sweep with one rail, two rail, surface from network of curves. If nothing has worked in your way, try patch. Okay, because patch means that it will just try to merge all the curves. So that should be as a last resort because you won't have much control in it. Okay, surface in patch, you'll get a similar result as sweep with two rails in this case. But that is like a last resort in some cases, this might not work. So you need that comes with basically practice. First, you'll try to do create a curve profile, multiple curves, and try to create loft. If it doesn't work, you'll try to you know create surface from one rail or surface from two rails, or you'll try to create surface from you know network of curves, or you'll try to create from boundary of curves, or in the last resort, it will be patch tool. Okay. So this is the most important tools in the surface tool set. Now I'll be giving a small demonstration of an actual architectural project. Okay, so I'll just show you my screen of the presentation. So can you see my presentation? Um, yeah, hope my presentation is seen and then so these are the basically the basic commands here. Okay, you can have all these, you know, surface from network of curves, sweep with one rail, sweep with two rails, you know, extrude curve. We have tried basically all major curves here. And then suppose you have a continuous curve profile. Okay, you have a continuous curve profile. And then if I create loft, you can create a smooth surface flowing all across the curves. Okay. And then surface from edges of the curves. Suppose you have only two ends, you can use loft. If you have only one constraint, you can use sweep with one rail. So this will be your rail and the other two ends would be your cross sections. If you have two rails on two ends, then you can use sweep with two rails or surface from boundary edges because you'll have a closed boundary all across. Okay. And then you have other command called revolve. Suppose you have created a curve profile like this. You can, I can actually, you can text me in my, you know, in my Instagram para underscore craft. We have our Instagram page para underscore craft. If you can, you know, DM me in my Instagram so that I'll send you this presentation. You can just try it. If you're stuck anywhere, we'll help you because, you know, we are just graduates. So we'll be ready to always help you. So you can find here your revolve command. We'll give you this presentation. You can try it. And then you'll have your patch tool, which we tried it. 
and then now coming to modeling building forms so this is one of the most famous project in copenhagen by jack angels so we'll just try to you know model this building okay so i'll give you this presentation so you can actually try various other you know structures so yeah so, or else shall we try something complex straight away maybe we can okay let's start off with this because we have 10 odd minutes so we'll try to do this building okay so hope you all have seen this image now now we'll start modeling the object or the building so hope my screen is seen rhino screen is seen is my rhino screen seen now yeah so now i'm creating a base rectangle so what is the base of that building it is a rectangle okay i'll just place this image here otherwise it will be better okay i'm just placing the image here okay the base of this building is a rectangle so i have made my rectangle now we have suppose until some kind of three to four floors is a straight rectangle again so i'll create another copy of a rectangle here so this is my base profile so from here is the triangular portion you know extruding so now what do i do here here comes the trick so now i'll create a second copy of this building i use using copy tool so if i do using gumball it will be placed randomly so now what do i do i need to overlap it again so when i tell overlap i'm talking about a reference so i'll use copy command because if i do using gumball it will i'll hold alt and i'll drag it but it will randomly paste at some distance which i don't want to i want to overlap it so i'll use copy command i'll start it here and i will place it here so that it is overlapping and then i'll hold this endpoint okay now if i cl uh, click on any object i'll have all the control points i'll select one of the endpoint and basically when you see any object try to imagine a curve profile that is a trick in rhino any complex shape just try to imagine a curve profile and then the second step should be start creating a surfaces okay so now now we have got this curve profile throughout okay now what do we do so now we'll go to our surface tools we have all our boundaries so when we have all our boundaries so we do this okay now we have this boundary here now we can straight away we can you know create a new definition here i'll create a new definition here if i create a new definition here suppose in this building i'm just trying to create this base shape i'm not talking about you know uh, this windows and all such stuff here because this windows and all have to be trimmed at each and every surface or else do you want to even try this building maybe we can just try this project so that you'll get a hand of you know all the command tools i just give you 2 uh, minutes because this building won't take much time in this couple of minutes time you can you know just create this curve two rectangles and this basic shape you have 2 minutes just try to do this this project will actually try to make it interactive and you know will do parallelly because in this pro with this example it will be like few surface tools you'll you know try it in this session itself so you have 2 minutes it is you know 552 554 will will be again starting it so yeah uh, hope you have made that basic profile now i'll try to show my screen i'll start the screen sharing again so hope my screen is visible now i hope my screen is visible now yeah so now we have created a copy of it and then you have created using the second copy of it now we have moved this you know created a copy i have overlapped the rectangle and then i have moved one endpoint here so okay so that i just rebuild this shape here so how did i do that to just you know depict it so once you have overlapped the rectangle you will click one of the end point and then move it using gumball so you are actually moving the control point now we have got this base profile 
move until you are you know satisfied with this profile you can do that using perspective mode you can orbit it okay now we have got a curve profile now the task is that to create the shape of this surface okay it is actually a very smooth uh, flowing surface here you can't see anywhere a rigid edge so how do we do that the next thing is that click explode select this curve and click on explode i'll show you multiple ways to create this now once you have this curve profile what all can i do so first thing is that i can use sweep it two rails because this can be my cross section okay this can be my cross section so if i click here if there is any overlapping thing i can see my toolbar here so i have one curve here and one curve here so now i have my overlapping tool here so these two can be my rails and these two can be my cross sections or vice versa so i'll try first using sweep it two rails so i have my first trail i have my second rail and then i have my first cross section i have my second cross section you need to explode it if it is not exploded what happens is that everything will be as a single rectangle you can't select individual lines so just type explode expl expl because if i type ex i'm getting exit so that's why rhino doesn't work with a fixed set of you know uh, shortcuts just type expl unless you see explode if you see explode enter and then click on this rectangle tool so that it will explode and then click on either two ends first end second end and you can click on the other ends here so you can see here that the surface has been created so two opposite ends as a rail and two opposite ends as a cross section so sweep it two rails follow always the command toolbar it is asking me to select first rail it is asking me to select the second rail it is asking me to select the first cross section it is asking me to select the second cross section okay so now you can see here the detail the detail of this so if i just orbit it you can see that it is not just a simple straight surface it is a very complex surface here okay you can see this here you can see the grid here okay now now once you got this what are the other techniques i just try to show, okay what are the other techniques i just you know I, there are actually five to six techniques to show but i just show other one other technique now we have all the boundary curves right we have all the four boundaries so either i can do with surface from network of curves or i can do surface from boundary edges okay two three four edges two or three or four so i have my four edges enter so i got this you can do the same using patch tool you can do the same using surface from network of tools so you can do like, like that you have multiple options so at some cases we have multiple options it is basically like filtering it out at some cases you'll have only one specific result possible okay once you've got this surface and then now you'll try to get all the boundary edges so now you'll explode the base by explode so that you'll select individually now for these two ends you'll loft it select these two you can either type loft and select the two curves or you can just select these two curves and then type loft okay you can select these two curves and then type loft or you can select type loft and select later either way it works so we have created our building we have got our building now what should we do we should create a rectangle inside and trim it so here we'll be creating a small rectangle so how what do we do that now we'll join it again because i'll try to offset it if it is a multiple lines offsetting would be an issue right even in autocad you have seen that it will come like an overlapping lines so i'll type join previously we tried explode now i'll try join once i have my join command i'll just scale it using gumball in both the directions along x along y now i have created my base okay now i'll extrude this base no i'll just extrude my base here now i should trim this center part out so i select this as i'll type trim i'll type trim i select this rectangle as my cutting reference enter okay i'll select inside so the center part is trimmed now we'll select this plane as my cutting reference enter i'll select object to trim just follow the instructions here so once you type trim here it will ask select the cutting objects okay now this plane is my cutting object and i want to trim this excess extrusion out 
So I'll select enter and then I'll select this. So this extrusion is removed. So now did you get this similar to this? If your proportions are right, you'll be exactly getting this building here. So now you can just try it here and then we'll give a conclusion talk. You can just for the next you know, five minutes, you can just you know quickly do this because very small exercise. And then you can also, I can, you, if you can come in contact with me, we'll share you the presentation. You can try other exercises too. So now you have this, you can just, you know, try this out in five minutes. So hope you, you are actually, you know, getting this done right. Yeah. Can you see my presentation now? So these are like few examples which you can try, you know, you can get in touch with me and then I'll share you this presentation. And wherever you are struck, you can let me know. I'll just, you know, help you out. These are basically few examples, you know, which you can practice it. Yeah. So this is, you know, the basic crux about the Rhino. Now you have got a hand about, uh, I, to just give you, you know, a few tips of it. All the five comments which I said, if you take a, a Rhino manual or if you take it in any detailed session or series, You'll see a number of curves. You can, if you can see my screen now, you can see here a large set a tool set here. So out of these tool set, just practice these five commands, which I would say as the best, uh, you know, design solutions for any surfaces. So just practice these five tools properly. You'll be getting a good hand, you know, to do it any any you know customized design. So yeah, you can just try them, and you can always you know get in touch with me. I'll be ready to help. So I'm, you know, ready to take some kind of doubts from your end. If you can, if you have any doubts, you can just, you know, post it on the comment session here. We'll, you know, take it ahead. Hi, thank you for the wonderful session, long session. I know it was, but uh, definitely the audience must have uh, had a great fun learning this. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, we are. Am I audible, right? Yeah, yeah it's audible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a minute. We'll have some doubt session if uh, there are there. I'll just check. Give me a second. Okay. Out of those four commands uh, you have shown for making surface, which is the best and easiest one to use? So yeah. So actually, when you see uh, when you see about the Rhino surface tool set, you have more than maybe close to twenty or twenty five. If I'm not wrong, you have such set of you know twenty five tool set. So what I could uh, actually gain from my experience in these four years was that I have broadly classified into four commands, which has a different function. Each command is actually uh, different from each other. In those four to five commands. So namely, loft surface from network of curves, and then you have sweep with one rail or two rails. So everything, all those four are very different from each other. But to start off with, try to you do loft if it doesn't work, and then try the other three, you know, surface tools. Okay. Uh, the other question is, uh, how do I create a cutout in the parametric surface? So to create a cutout, you have the command I showed in the demonstration was trim. So you'll create some kind of a object as a reference. Suppose I had the triangular shape and then I made a, a, you know, a basic extrusion. So I have created a reference to trim it. You can straight away use trim command or else you can, there is a other command called, you know, make hole. That is a pretty advanced uh, step. So I'm not actually trying to you know, talk about this here, but if you have time, you can actually explore it. It is called a make hole command. Or you can straight away try, you know, split or trim. That should work. Okay. Uh, okay. Is there any way to generate pattern from the lost command? Oh, this, sorry, I didn't get it. What is lost? Okay, loft command. Loft command. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. My yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no problem. So, to generate a pattern from a loft command. So, uh, all the patterns you see are scripted. In Rhino, what happens is that you create a base surface. So the basically to give you, you know, a handbook or a brief about how to start the design process, whatever design you see, try to imagine a boundary curves or internal network of curves. So the first step you see any complex shape, try to imagine a set of curves. Then you try to create the surfaces in Rhino using surface tools. After that, you're done with Rhino. Then go to Grasshopper, which is the advanced step. There you script the patterns. 
So in Rhino, you can't actually create patterns because you should again, you know, draw it like a AutoCAD. It is no point in it. Okay, uh, so I guess uh, mm, any more questions? Let me just check a second uh, if we have any more questions. Otherwise, we are pretty much done over here. Mm. Give me a second. Yeah, I'll just uh, check from the... Sure. Okay, uh, we have uh, more questions that uh, when I copy one rectangle, it creates a plane, P-L-A-N-E. Yeah. So uh, how to stop that? So actually when you are copying it, so to copy it, you should hold Alt and click on the arrow mark. Once you see the gumball, you'll have one arrow mark and in the center of the you know arrow mark, you'll have a ball, spear. If you click the spear, it'll actually extrude it. So you should not click the spear. You should just create, click on the arrow symbol here, basically the tip of the arrow. So if you hold Alt and you know click that, you can actually you know copy it instead of extruding it. So basically, the spear holds as a you know creating a surface. You should not click on the spear in the arrow mark. Okay. Uh, can CAD contour levels be imported in Rhino line and rectangle? You showed uh, intersecting in the beginning. Uh, didn't intersect on the same point. So basically, whatever you have it in CAD or in SketchUp, it will be imported in uh, Rhino. So this is actually developed after you know the recent development. Uh, they have actually modified Rhino and released it recently. So maybe some 10 odd years ago. So what happens is that any software you use, be it Revit or CAD or SketchUp, you can import it in its original geometry form without any you know without any shaping out you can get an exact geometry in rhino so you can easily be able to do that so that won't be an issue okay uh, and the last question can you please repeat yeah. the difference between swift one and two command okay so the thing is here is that suppose i have my two uh, cross sections so suppose you can have cross sections and number of curves in my case suppose uh, suppose I'm taking the example of this phone here. You have two cross section here. So this is my cross section. So suppose now you have only one kind of a cross, you know, perpendicular curve. So you are actually telling the surface to act. You'll create some kind of a curve here, and you tell that okay, now this along these two curves, the surface should flow along this rail. Only one rail is there. Then you'll use sweep with one rail. Suppose you have a restriction of this end also. You'll create some other random curve here. And then you'll tell, okay, my surface should follow these two as a cross section. And these two rails are fixed. You're fixing the profile of the two rails. Then you should use sweep it two rails. Or else if you just have only one rail as a restriction, then you can just go with sweep it one rail. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. So these were all the doubts from the today's session as uh, mm -hmm. uh, they enjoyed the session. And it was very well done. So thank you so much uh, for joining us. And thank you, Kosha. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kosha. Thank you for IAD. Thank you, IADA, for inviting me. It was a great session. And in fact, the virtual event was actually amazing. Like uh, the event, even the auditorium. It was a different try from IADA. It was very you know interesting. It was a great effort by IADA. And thank you for calling me here. There were some technical issues in my presentation. I apologize for the inconvenience. I couldn't get into my notice. So at some stages, I couldn't share my screen and my mic was off. So uh, sorry for any inconvenience. Hope you can get in touch with me and I'll be ready to help you out. Hope uh, you all enjoyed the session. Thank you. Yeah, we all enjoyed. But we have two more queries if you can address. Yeah, okay. sure. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, just a second. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, would you make only facade in Rhino or will you recommend to make the whole architectural model uh, on Rhino, including internal walls and everything? Please talk about export option to skip or other softwares uh, for render. 
So the basic design flow I follow is that you have definitely some commands, uh, you know, some plugins in Rhino. Basically, it works like a rivet. If you click on a window position here, it like basically it's a BIM plugin in Rhino. You have several BIM plugins, so you can either you can you know use one of them and you can do everything in Rhino itself. So if you create a line, it will create a wall. If you click on a some point, it will create a window or a door, for instance. So you can do such stuff in Rhino. Definitely possible. You have some BIM plugins. But as a core, if you just wanted to use a Rhino software without any plugin, I don't recommend it to create some kind of a complete uh, uh, geometry for Windows and all. Because you have a better plugin, suppose Archicad is there. Archicad and Rhino has a very good interface about, you know, to share the data. I think recently even Rivet has started this. There is a plugin, Archicad Live Connection. So whatever you do in Arch Archicad is basically very easy to create walls, doors, and you can actually get drawings in it. So whichever is parametric, such stuff can be done in Rhino. It will have a live plugin. Whatever you're doing in Rhino will automatically be replaced in Archicad. So that has that feature. So generally, that is a workflow I follow. So if you have anything, you can do it in SketchUp or you know any any other straight extrusions. So believe me, SketchUp is even though we have this advanced software like you know Rhino, Grasshopper, or Max. So nothing can replace SketchUp. So SketchUp, when in my whole uh, workshop, I was comparing with SketchUp, what or um, where, where all SketchUp won't work. But to be honest, SketchUp is amazing for any straight surfaces. Because if you see the Rhino interface, it is a bit dull. If you apply some materials, if you can apply some texture, it, it won't be that you know, you know innovative as SketchUp. So if you have some you know, basic shapes, SketchUp is the best. If you have something parametric, only that you do it in Rhino and then take it to any other parent software which you are modeling it. That would be the tip I would give. Okay, and the last question. Uh, yeah. Alter plus selecting the shape makes the wall. Sorry, I didn't get you. Uh, alter plus, alt plus. Yeah. Uh, selecting the shape makes the wall. Okay, so if you are set, holding alt and dragging the gumball, if you drag the arrow, it will create a copy. Just below the arrow, you'll see a small spear. If you drag the spear, you'll create a surface. So in an arrow, you'll at the center, you'll have a ball. and the tip, you'll have the arrowhead. If you drag the arrowhead, you'll create a copy. If you drag the spear in the center, you'll create actually a surface. That is an, basically like an extrude. As I said, Gumball has various functions. It can move, it can copy, it can rotate, it can scale, it can create a surface. So that's one of this you know, tool in uh, Gumball. Okay, uh, so still if you have any question, please do send us and we will be happy to pass it on to Sai and he'll be happy to address it. Yeah, definitely. Pretty much for the day we are done and it was a wonderful workshop. Thank you. It was most awaited thing for the day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Yeah, so guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the entire day at IDA 2020, an initiative by Architects Diary. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. And tomorrow, do tune in at the same time for more exciting sessions and uh, workshop and panel discussions. At this, uh, tune in at the same time. The, you know, you email address provided to you today. And we hope to see you tomorrow in good health. Till then, stay safe. Stay um, healthy. Bye-bye. Take care.